Hello and welcome to Tech Deals part 4 of the $1200 Ryzen 5 1600 computer build video series system setup. In this video today we are going to be updating our BIOS, installing Windows, installing our chipset and video drivers, overclocking our CPU, setting up the RAM to the proper speed. I'm going to be showing you an ADA64 stress test with this overclocked. We're going to be doing a variety of things today on this computer. The goal is to take our freshly built system and turn it into a safe working machine with overclock settings that should be safe to use every day. Now, if you have not watched any of the previous videos in the series, they'll be linked down in the video description below. The very first link down there will take you to the full playlist on this video series. Part 1 was the parts overview. Part 2 was the very long 1 hour 47 minute Y vlog. Very detailed look at all the parts, alternative uh, suggestions, even a pre-built comparison and two alternative builds for this system. Part 3 was the actual build of the computer itself, camera overhead step by step. Part 3.5 is a bonus video, two minutes long, RGB and sound check. It's not published, so if you're interested in seeing it, you do have to click that link down below. And then part four is here. Coming up after this video will be Windows performance, game performance, and some RGB shots. Uh, I'm gonna try to do some really, really nice uh, RGB shots, as well as a final follow-up review that kind of concludes the series. If I do any more tests on this, it may be further overclocking with aftermarket coolers. We'll have to see what the interest is. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to be notified of future videos in this series, please click that subscribe button down below in order to be notified when future videos come out. I do a lot of different videos on my channel, and I'd certainly love it if you watch them. And last but certainly not least, all of the parts in this build are linked in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. Compare prices between both and buy it where it makes the most sense to you. But if you found this build video series helpful, please use those links when shopping. I would certainly appreciate it. Now I recognize this is a longer video and you may not be interested in all of it. There will be timestamps down in the bottom of the video description below. If you want to skip to something such as CPU overclocking, you can certainly use those to skip around the video. In just a minute, we're going to go full screen and I'm going to take you step by step through everything that I just mentioned that we're doing in this video. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about my experience with RAM in this computer. I have 10 kits of RAM and I tested all 10 of them on this motherboard. So what's the short version rather than going through all of these memory kits, which the results will only apply to that specific board? If you want the easy approach, if you want to be able to simply go in, click a button, have reasonably fast RAM with no headaches or concerns, buy DDR4-2666. It's going to work across the board. Anything over that speed is overclocked. There is no single memory kit that you can buy that will run faster than 2666 in every single board, in every single configuration. This is a very important point. Not even the G-Skill Flare X does that. Some of these memory kits run at their rated speed in that MSI board, and some do not. But some of the boards that don't run it in that run just fine in my ASUS board, and vice versa. If you are willing to tinker, if you're willing to play around with RAM timings and RAM settings and spend some time in the advanced pages of the BIOS, by all means, DDR4 3000 and 3200 are not that much more expensive than 2666 is, but you may have to play around with it. If you simply want to click a button, have a reasonably fast RAM with no headaches or concerns, just buy the 2666. With all that being said, let's take a look at the first thing to do with our computer, which is to update the system BIOS before you install Windows. When we first turn on the computer, here's what you're greeted with. Quite attractive, isn't it? You want to make sure you press the delete key to enter the BIOS setup before you do anything else with your new computer. Once you enter the BIOS, this will be the first screen you see. This is easy configuration. Now you can press F7, which will switch to advanced mode, but for now we're just going to look at easy mode. Look at the top center of the screen. You'll see several things. First of all, the CPU speed defaults to 3.2 gigahertz. That's what the standard speed of the Ryzen 5 16 is. Don't mess with that for now. And then the DDR speed is 2133. Also don't mess with that for now. We need to do a BIOS update and we do not want to adjust the default speeds until after that's complete. Unlike some previous platforms which updating the BIOS was perhaps optional, it really isn't here. 
If you really want to get the most out of your Ryzen platform, a BIOS update is almost certainly going to be necessary. This motherboard came with the launch BIOS 1.0 released back in February. There have been eight BIOS revisions to this particular motherboard since. Now every motherboard is going to have a different number of BIOS revisions. All you need to do is download the most recent BIOS. You will do that from the manufacturer's website. Every motherboard has unique BIOS, so you need to go to the manufacturer's website, go to the model of the motherboard that you purchased, and download the BIOS for that. You'll have to do this on another computer, put it on a USB thumb drive, and then put it into this machine. Now once you do that, you're going to click the M flash button down in the bottom left hand corner. Now this will differ if you do not have an MSI motherboard. Every motherboard has some type of BIOS updating utility built right into the setup, but it's going to differ depending upon the board that you have. Once you click this button, you'll see this screen. Now on the next screen, you're going to see the USB thumb drive that's installed in your computer that you've downloaded the BIOS to on another machine. In this case, I have a 16 gigabyte Kingston USB thumb drive, and you can see here the actual Windows 10 source files along with the BIOS. You can use the same USB 10 thumb drive that you created in order to install Windows 10 to put the BIOS update on it. Using the mouse or keyboard, select the BIOS file. Here you can see the current BIOS is version 1.0 and the new selected BIOS is version 1.8. You can see the model numbers match. Look how far apart the build dates are. We're going from February 28th to August 12th. This is a huge improvement. There are many, many updates that have been done. And if you want to run your RAM at a fast speed, if you want to get the best performance out of your Ryzen chip, this is very important to do. Once you click on the BIOS, it'll ask do you want to read this file, and then it will start updating as you can see here. This process usually takes 5 to 10 minutes. Make absolutely sure that you do not reset your computer manually. Let it run. You can end up with a computer that will not boot if this does not complete successfully. Once that's complete, it'll reboot your system and you'll see a screen similar to this. Now you could certainly press F1 to run setup, but generally you don't need to. Press F2 to load the default values and continue. You're going to see the system now boot, and depending upon your motherboard, it should boot directly to the USB thumb drive that you already have installed with Windows 10. I have previously done a video on how to make a USB 10 thumb drive. You simply need another Windows computer to do it. Free download tool from Microsoft's website. Once you've made a USB 10 drive, once you put it in, it's going to boot to this screen. At this point, it's the standard Windows 10 install. At this point, you simply need to select your language, time, currency, and keyboard input. For most people, it's going to be simply click next to continue and then simply click the install now button. Now you need to select your product key. You can type this in now or you can choose the I don't have a product key button if you either don't have it handy or simply haven't bought one yet. Now link down in the video description below is a place to get an inexpensive key. I've talked about it before, kingwin.net, under $30. But here you need to select which version you want to install. Let me give you a cautionary statement. You can upgrade from Home to Pro within Windows without reinstalling. You cannot downgrade from Pro to Home. If you're not sure yet which one to select, select Home. You can always change it to Pro, but not vice versa. Once you've selected the version, you simply have to accept the license terms and continue. Once you click past this, then you have to choose between upgrade or custom. You're going to choose custom. Your drive should be completely blank, assuming this is a new build, and you'll simply need to select the partitions that you're going to work with. Now you'll see a lot of partitions right here. That's because I've used all these drives before. When I did my which SSD should you buy video, for example, I had to create partitions in order to test with them, which is why all of these drives have partitions. In fact, because I know all these drives have no real data on them, I'm actually going to go through and delete everything partition. Don't do this unless you're absolutely sure there's no data to save because while it's not 100% unrecoverable, it would be time consuming and expensive to undo this if you delete something by mistake. But in my case, I'm going through to delete all of the partitions and I'm only going to choose the drive that I actually want to install Windows on. I'm going to leave the others as unallocated space. I'm going to show you once we get into Windows how to set those drives up, format them, choose drive letters, etc. You don't even need to create any partitions yourself. Windows will take care of everything you need on the boot drive. 
All we have to do is pick which one to install on. Now if you watch my build video, you'll know I included two extra solid state drives that weren't part of the 1200R build. But we want to install on the 275GB Crucial MX300, it's the smallest drive here. The larger ones are either the big 2.5-inch uh, solid state drives or the 3 terabyte hard drive that was included in the build. No, you do not have to click the new button, simply select the drive you want to install on and click next. Windows will take care of everything else for you. Now how long the rest of this takes depend entirely upon the speed of the storage medium you're installing to. Solid state drives will of course be much quicker than hard drives. I'm going to cut ahead to where this is almost finished. Now Windows 10 has finished copying all the files over, it's now going to reboot the machine. You can of course click restart now or it'll do it within 10 seconds. Make sure you remove the USB thumb drive when this reboots, otherwise your system might just boot right back to the USB thumb drive. By removing it, it'll boot to the solid state drive or hard drive that you've got Windows 10 now installed onto. You'll see this happen a few times. It'll flash back and forth, getting devices ready, setting up things. This is just a process Windows 10 is going through. Now, if you have your computer actually connected to the internet, if you've got an ethernet cable plugged into your gigabit ethernet port on one of these motherboards, then Windows 10 can get automatically online, download updated drivers, and make sure that your system is at least functional on the first boot and initial setup. It'll also get the very first set of critical updates in case Windows 10's need something for your particular system. Once it has done all that, you will eventually end up at this screen. Select your region. For many of you, it'll be the United States. For some of you, it'll be somewhere else. Once you hit yes here, then you need to choose your keyboard layout. Again, for many of you, it's going to be the US, otherwise pick your favorite one. Then you're going to either add a second keyboard layout or skip it. Most people will skip that. Here you can see that we're connected. Network, it's automatically detected that we're online. It's going to take care of this, do the updating, and then reboot the machine if necessary. I would like to make a quick point here. From the point where let's start with your region to the time we were at the Windows desktop was 4 minutes 23 seconds flat, and that includes the time it took me to talk through some of these screens. Now I'm not putting the whole thing in, this won't be 4 minutes, I'm going to trim a bunch of it out. This is one of the fastest Windows setups I have seen. The Crucial MX300, by the way, actually came in bottom in the benchmarks in my which SSD video should you buy. In the real world, it is blazingly fast and I absolutely recommend it. Now, how would you like to set this up? Most of you should choose the top one, set up for personal use. The bottom one is only for domains and companies, organizations, schools, etc. Choose set up for personal use once you hit next there. Then you need to sign in with Microsoft, your email, phone, or Skype account that you use with Windows 10. Now you don't have to use a Microsoft account. I am here, but you can click offline account in the bottom left hand corner if you don't want to set one up. The next thing it's going to ask you to set up is a PIN, a four digit PIN to sign into this computer. I strongly recommend you use one. It's actually more secure than your password, which has to be synchronized over the network where the PIN is stored and encrypted locally. The PIN you use to log in day in and day out only works on the specific machine you're setting up. It's not universal across all computers. I use one, I recommend you do as well. The next screen asks, do you want to use Cortana as your personal assistant? Yes or no, it's your choice. Click learn more if you'd like to read more about her, but basically she's Microsoft's version of Siri. Then the next screen has privacy settings. Turn them on and off as you like. You can click learn more if you'd like more details, otherwise click accept when you're ready to go. After you click on accept, it's then going to come up and say, hi, we're happy you're here. Then it's going to start configuring your system with drivers for your specific machine, a few programs and other things for you. I'm going to skip ahead to when it's finished. And here we are at the Windows desktop. No joke, it was just over four minutes from the first time when you selected your region to get into de to the desktop. And that was leaving me room to actually voice over some things and comment on some things. This really was quick. Now, once you're at the desktop, please do not start using your computer. This machine is not secure. All fresh installs of Windows are unsafe and unsecure. The drivers are out of date. You need to download and install those. Windows update is out of date. Your antivirus and anti-malware protection are out of date. Let's get those updated right now. The very first thing we want to do is we want to get under the start button, click the settings button right there, and click update and security. Then you want to click check for updates. This is incredibly important. 
Windows 10 gets updated regularly. I know some people don't like their computer auto updating itself on a regular basis. If you heard about the WannaCry ransomware that ran around a few months ago on the internet, many large and small organizations and people were hit by it. Even the National Health Service of the UK was hit by it. Here's the reality of it. Microsoft had patched the security vulnerability which allowed that ransomware to happen three months before it struck. Anybody who was running a fully patched, fully update version of Windows, now this includes Windows 10, 8, 7, Vista, and even XP. Even though Windows XP hasn't been updated for two years, they went ahead and issued an update for everyone anyway. It was that severe of a problem. Microsoft doesn't usually do that, but they patched the problem. Antivirus will not protect you from those things because they're direct vulnerabilities and flaws within Windows. If you were running an up-to-date version of Windows, you were safe. If you weren't, you weren't. Now I've just cut ahead here. It's downloaded the updates. It's preparing to install them because nobody wants to watch a progress bar. But essentially it's downloading the definition update for Windows Defender, which is the built-in antivirus, the cumulative update for Windows 10 version 1703, which is the current version, Windows malicious software, a variety of things, the malicious software removal tool, once Windows 10 is up to date, please note, if you keep it online, it will keep itself up to date. You only have to do this when you first install Windows or you first buy a new machine. This gets Windows current with the latest set of patches. Then Windows, so long as you keep it online or get online every week or so, will then get itself up to date. As I said before, browsing the web in 2017 with an out of date version of Windows is just asking for problems and antivirus is not security. Because if a program such as the WannaCry ransomware utilizes a security hole in Windows itself, antivirus can't stop it. Now, once it's gone through that process, a restart will be required. Just click the restart button now. It'll reboot, go through its updating process, and put you back to the Windows desktop. Once the system reboots, you're back to the desktop. Now we need to download and install your NVIDIA graphics drivers. Since we have an NVIDIA card, we're going to go to NVIDIA's website, download the 10 series GTX 1060 driver, since that's what we have uh, installed on this computer. We'll click search, then click the download button. Then just hit agree and download. Then down at the bottom, click on the save button. This will put it in your downloads folder. Once it's downloaded, click the run button right on the screen and then you can go ahead and close your web browser. You'll need to hit yes there to launch the installer. At this point, you can just choose all of the defaults through the NVIDIA installer. This will install NVIDIA's graphics drivers, NVIDIA GeForce Experience, and get everything up to date for you to be able to play the latest and greatest games with the most compatibility and the best performance. After it runs a scan, here it's going to come up and ask you to agree to the license agreement, agree and continue, because you frankly have no other choice, and then it's going to want Express or Custom. I advise Express. It'll go through the process. This will take a couple minutes, and then it'll be finished. The next thing we need to do is activate Windows. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see it says Activate Windows, because we did not type a product key when we set up our machine. Click Start, Settings, Update and Security, Activation. Windows 10 is not activated. Click Change Your Product Key. This is where you type in your product key. After typing in your product key, click Activate and then Windows will activate and then you'll be good to go. Yay, Windows is activated. For those of you curious where I get my copies of Windows 10, I have 10 different copies purchased from kingwin.net. I use it for all of my testing machines. There is a link down in the video description below to Kingwin takes you directly to this page. Like my videos and want to support me? Go do all your shopping at Kingwin using that link. It does help me out. Thank you. Side note, see the sellers with five stars and tens of thousands of transactions completed? Buy from those. That's what I did and you'll have far fewer problems buying from established sellers rather than brand new ones. Next up, we need to download and install the AMD chipset drivers. This is actually more important than you might think. Yes, Windows 10 does have generic drivers for the AMD AM4 chipset, the X370, B350, etc. But this also installs the Ryzen Balanced Power Profile. It improves gaming performance a little bit, improves power consumption responsiveness. Once you click the first download link, just like the video drivers for either an AMD or NVIDIA card, it runs this installer it has to extract. 
Then you're faced with the legal agreement. Click accept and install because frankly you have no other choice. Then it's going to search for new drivers. There's currently no AMD chipset drivers. Now this is not for a graphics card. This is for the AM4 platform, for your Ryzen platform. You want to click the local driver. This is what we just downloaded. In this case, it's version 17.3, but yours may be different if you do this in the future. Once you click the local driver, it's going to ask you express or custom. Just choose express. You really don't need to do anything different. Once that's been installed, click restart now and it'll bring you back to the Windows desktop. Once the system is rebooted, you can see we are now by default on the AMD Ryzen Balanced Power Profile. I recommend you use it. AMD has set this up to give you maximum performance while still maintaining good power efficiency while in Windows 10. Now the next thing we're going to do is reboot the machine and go into the BIOS by pressing the delete key. Couple of things. First of all, please note that we are in fact on the current version, which is 1.8 at the moment of the BIOS. You can see it right in the upper right hand corner. The next thing I want to draw your attention to are two different things. The AXMP button in the upper left hand corner, I've got it highlighted for you, and then the two XMP profiles in the bottom middle. Now this is going to vary depending upon what RAM you have installed, but if you've installed the Corsair DDR4 2666 RAM I currently have installed, then we want to select the XMP profile too. You do this by clicking the on button and then clicking it again to switch from one to two. The profile one would set the RAM to 2400 megahertz and profile two will set it to 2666. You can do it manually in the advanced section of the BIOS as well, playing with the timings, but generally it's much easier to do it here if you don't want to go into the advanced section. Now, if your first question is, wait a minute, I thought the system was spec with DDR4-3000. It is, because that's probably what you should buy. I happen to have 2666 RGB RAM from Corsair. My 3000 is non-RGB, so for the beauty build, I'm using 2666, but for benchmarking, I'm using the faster memory. I've also put DDR4-3200 in here. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. I will go into more detail in a future video. I tested 10 different memory kits in this board and I will have all those results in a future video. It simply became too much content to add here, so I'll simply do it separately. Now, just so you can see what it looks like, I've actually got this in motion here. You'll see we're off. I click it to on. You'll see that it's currently selected to two. You can click on the one and choose the one if you prefer 2400. We click the two. We select 2666. There we go. You can see it right there. At this point, all you have to do is hit the F10 key, which will come up with a box and ask you if you want to save the changes and reboot. Rebooting back into the BIOS, pressing the delete key, you will notice that our DDR4 memory speed is now 2667. 2666, 2667, different BIOSes round it differently. But I, I went ahead and rebooted so that it would actually update here. Now we're gonna click the advanced button and because we're actually gonna do some overclocking. Come down here to the OC button, click overclocking. You're about to see the easiest overclock in history. Come over to CPU ratio and type in a 37. Press enter, and that's all there is to it. Yes, you can scroll down and take a look at the other settings. You can see CPU core voltage, DDR RAM voltage. Don't mess with any of it. I have had no problems playing games, stress testing, loading up all the cores at 3.7 gigahertz on the stock cooler. You get about 75 degrees Celsius max under an A to 64 stress test. Press F10, hit yes to reboot, you're good to go. And once you press F10 and reboot, we'll come back into Windows and you can see our clock speed is now 3.7 gigahertz and it's fixed. Even with not much going on, it stays steady. Likewise, if you click the memory tab, you'll see our memory is now running at 2667. You can see it on the bottom right hand corner. So our overclocked memory and our overclocked CPU are running and that was one click of AXMP and that was typing in a 37 into the multiplier and pressing F10. It really is that simple. If you're curious to see what temperatures and fan speeds look like under an A to 64 stress test, here you go. 72 degrees Celsius, 16 minutes into this run. I ended up running it for about 25 minutes. We ended up getting about 74, 75 C at about the 25 minute mark and that's where it peaked. It didn't go any higher than that. Notice the fan speed, 1900 RPM. It did peak out at about 2000. It's extremely quiet. I did post a bonus video. Check that playlist down in the description if you want to see the two minute sound uh, where I took my phone and actually put it right down next to the fan so you could hear it. In that bonus 3.5 video, the fan was turning at 2000 RPM. 
Now, if that's so nice, you say, why don't we run at 3.8 gigahertz? This is why. Notice the clock speed's a little higher. Notice I had to kick the voltage up a little bit. It was not stable at stock auto voltage. I had to set 1.3 volts manually. The CPU fan is 300 RPM higher than it was at 3.7. Look at the temperatures. Now we are 17 minutes into the run when I took this screenshot where it's 77 degrees Celsius. This peaked at 79 degrees Celsius. So it's hotter, the fan's running hotter, and look at the power consumption. We're at 100 watts. This is a 95 watt TDP cooler. You're pushing it. If you wanna go over 3.7 gigahertz, I recommend two things, an aftermarket cooler and the Ryzen 5 1600X, not the 1600. If you're gonna buy an aftermarket cooler, spend the 20 bucks, Get the 1600X, it's been tested to four gigahertz from the factory, put a Hyper 612 Evo on it, set it to four gigahertz and be a happy camper. And so there you have it. Our system is up to date and complete. We are running our RAM at 2666. We're running our CPU at 3.7 gigahertz. Windows is installed, our BIOS is up to date, our drivers are downloaded and installed. It's ready to use. Now, I'm recording this video several days after I actually built the machine. I've used it for several days. I've played games on it. I've tested it. I've had not had any problems with it. I have to say, for the money, this is an incredible value if you like the RGB, mind you. Now, I know that many people have commented that they don't, which is why the alternative builds in part two, the Y vlog exists, including an $800 version of this machine. If you skipped over part two, you might consider giving it a look. There are timestamps in the Y vlog. Go check that out, if you, even if you just wanna see the alternative builds to see how you can put this machine together with the same CPU and the same graphics card for just $800. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments down below the video description and check out the video description. The first link is the playlist to all the videos in this video series. Below that are all the links to Amazon and Newegg. Please use them when shopping. But below that are links to my Twitter and Patreon. Now if you like this video series and you want to see more stuff like this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I do receive limited support of product from manufacturers. However, I still buy most of the stuff that I actually show you on my channel. The only things in this build which were provided by anybody is uh, Corsair. The power supply, the RAM, and the case were provided by Corsair, but everything else, including the CPU, was bought by me. So your support will let me do more builds like this. As for the Twitter link below, consider following me on Twitter. When I was testing all these RAM kits and testing overclocking, I was posting real-time updates to Twitter. There's actually quite a few tweets. If you're interested in knowing more about this RAM, you can actually go look at the past two days of tweets and you'll see a bunch of posts and a bunch of screenshots as I was playing around with this stuff. If you'd like sort of a real-time feed as I'm benchmarking and testing new builds, follow me on Twitter if you'd like to see that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.